Hello everyone, my name is Master Starman, and welcome to Let's Play Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. I have a lot of things to say about this game. I know it's also not the game everybody particularly loves or talks about a whole lot, it's... Yeah, it's one of those games. But, I have a lot of things I, w I have to say about this game. We've seen a lot of those over time, but for now, we're going to be starting off here. Is it Mumbers Motors? In Mumbers Motors. <laughs> In Showdown Town, I'll find your I didn't even get time to read all that. <laughs> Once upon a time, there lived a heroic bear called Banjo, a rather loud bird called Kazooie, and an unpleasant witch called Gruntilda. When Banjo's sister was kidnapped, the bear and bird rescued her from the depths of the witch's lair, overcoming many perils and speech impediments to send Gruntilda tumbling to her doom. But she was nothing if not persistent, and surprising nobody, the old hag soon rose from her grave for round two. Our brave heroes once again stood in her way, and this second showdown ended just as badly for Gruntilda, who really should have quit while she was ahead. Many years have passed, and peace reigns in Spiral Mountain. So what became of the bear, the bird, and the witch? <laughs> oh, this is the life. Pizza, sunshine, and not a care in the world. <laughs> this is DJ Jamjers on Spiral Mountain FM. Freaking news, punks. Did you know it's been 10 years since you two were invited? Pah, I didn't get all the time to read that. Hmm. <laughs> May have put on a couple pounds. <laughs> so it's not like we gotta fight that old hag anymore. Eight long years to bounce back. <laughs> oh, this time, make you cheer. Back to the familiar rhyming scheme, so it's been a long time since those days. Nope, can't see who's making that racket. Let's take a look. Okay, I think I can still carry a hold on. Just about anything for a quiet life. So yeah, some things have definitely changed a lot since our last adventure. Banjo and Kazooie are both... Let's just say they've seen some better days. We can still move, we can jump, we move and jump like a 40-ton truck, but yeah. If you weren't so unfit, you could have flown us there, Kazooie. What the Grunty, is that you? Yes, it's me, you pudgy fool. I'm back again and ready to rule. I doubt it. Have you noticed you're just a skull? <laughs> At least I haven't got a gut. Let's rumble now. I'll bite your butt. Greetings, those second-rate game characters. Who are you? My title is the Lord of Games, but you husbands can call me Log. I am the grand creator of all video games. Even ones that don't sell very well, like goalies. <laughs> that is a sick bird. <laughs> Your name is Odd, and you look a bit queer, so don't look at you a pretty slug. <laughs> I come to settle differences, <laughs> cliched crone. <laughs> You'll play a challenge of my choice. To the winner goes to Spiral Mountain, to the loser, an eternity toil in the video game factory. 
This sounds like a preposterous ruse. What'll it be if we do refuse? Oh dear. <laughs> I wish you could stay like this, but I suppose people will actually take to take part in this game. <laughs> now then, in line with Banjo tradition, your challenge will be consist of collecting, uh, it's more or less a first challenge consists of collecting these coin thing, token things, whatever. I want to draw attention to the first transformation uh, that the frog transformation that they turned Banjo into, because... No, 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 it's too painful to watch. Gamers don't want to be all this. They want to be shoot things or broadening the demographic. Hmm, I'll have to think of something original. Hmm. Pointless Collector! Achievement unlocked! Well, then, failures, listen carefully. Failures, we've been in several games already. But nowhere near as many as that Italian gentleman, correct? <laughs> <laughs> he does have a point. <laughs> I'll now transport you to a brand new game world, considerably more impressive than anything you've seen before. My body's gone, but now my eyes. All I can see is a pack of lies. <laughs> Mr. Log, I don't think any of us are in really good shape for another adventure. Well, Banjo, whether you like it or not, you're about to. <laughs> Any other requests? <laughs> Hail City Brain, where are my moves from the previous game? <laughs> you won't be needing those. They were rather outdated anyway. <laughs> Bird was bad in last game, now it seems she's extra lame. <laughs> I just love Grunty's rhyming scheme in this back. <laughs> Please follow me in those vehicles before I change my mind. <laughs> Come on, Banjo, let's grab the cool looking <laughs> one. <laughs> Too slow, losers. Watch me go. I'll win this time. I just know. This one's a bit safer. No, it looks like a shopping trolley. We <laughs> look really stupid. <laughs> faster, go faster. Put your foot down. So yeah, what I was trying to say there was that I want to bring attention to the frog transformation because that is actually a reference to another rare rare title, Viva Pinata, to be specific. We'll get more into this later on, but because yeah, we still got more opening cutscenes. That looked rather painful. Let's begin, shall we? This charming locale is known as Showdown Town. Perched up there is my splendid video game factory. While exploring the town, look for those doors, which lead into game worlds of my own creation. There you'll find jigsaw pieces. Jiggies, that's the best we could come up with. Come, <laughs> come around chasing Jiggies twice before. Silence, breathe. <laughs> Deposit the jigsaw piece in the Jiggy Bank and more doors will open to you. Win bank enough Jiggies to open the door of the final world, return to Spiral Mountain, and potentially win the game. Well, I think your town looks very nice, Mr. Log. I was reading that in the wrong voice, my bad. If you say so, Banjo, how about telling us what happened to Warp Brain? Why oh, you slept? I become a mechanic, building my grunt bots to make you panic. Grunty's role in my wonderful game is quite simple. She must try and prevent you two from- I didn't finish reading that. But how do we play your daft game when you're stolen her attributes? By using this impatient bird, you- of dubi dubious popularity. A rusty metal stick? You've gotta be joking, tubehead. <laughs> Actually, you find that rusty stick a magical wrench with near unlimited creative power. So Birdbrain gets a nice wrench. What do I get for this lovely wrench? My, Piddles isn't going to like that. Ah, 
Now then, hold down the right trigger to pick up objects and release to drop them. Pick up this mumble crate and take it to the skull-faced gentleman over there. Okay then! We got a lot of stuff to talk about. First things first... No, okay. Yeah, Nuts and Bolts, I think is pretty safe to say, does not play like most typical platformers do. And yeah, starting off, we got a type of new collectible to Nuts and Bolts here. These are known as Mumbo Crates. And these will essentially, if we take them over to Mumbo's pad here, drop Mumbo Crate and special things on the ground, then come to talk to Clover Shaman. Thankfully, when you pick up, first of all, you use the right trigger to pick stuff up. It's pretty simple, self-explanatory. When you're over an objective like the Mumbo Pad with a Mumbo Crate, it just automatically goes to it, which is great. And yeah, Mumbo Crate for Bear. Great. Take cards to build vehicles in order to play games. Create a simple card so Yinberg not get confused. Barry use left stick to look through parts of Mumble Crate when bored of looking, press B to continue. So yeah. <sighs> what will we be going over today? Every piece of equipment in this? Well, um, yeah, there's a lot to say the least. Standard seat. Seats are basically required to make any vehicles in the entire game. You will need them. This one, as Mumble said, Mumble's descriptions generally say what you need. The strength and weight requirement, like, statuses are on the right, you can see all that for yourself. Yeah, we have wheels, which... Wheels are obviously, I mean, needed for most car vehicle type things anyway. Don't provide much grip, because, but at least they're not square. These things don't have very good traction, they can't go up a lot of slopes, we'll see that in a moment. But they also move slightly faster than the grippy tires, which we'll get into a bit later. Small engine, which is something needed in order to give the vehicles power. Not very fast, but it's only the beginning of the game, so yeah. Fuel is needed to fuel the vehicles. It's the smallest and the lightest of all the fuel things. We got a tray. Bear can load objects into this for a vehicle to carry around. Taxi seat. This is mainly used in escort missions. We'll be getting to those a little bit later. Ammo crate, which is essentially similar to the fuel except for weaponry. And we got a bunch of cubes, which are like a bunch of different vehicle parts, which will mostly be for building purposes. We get 50 of each. Yeah! We're oh, finding lots of mumble crates all around. All crates contain different parts. I'm going. Bring crates back to Mumbo to open and store new parts in garage. That's how Bear and Burr will get more parts for vehicles. Oh, now come with Mumbo into garage. We'll try and make something useful for simple parts to find. And the game automatically will teleport us in there. I won't be going ever into everything in Mumbo's garage because this place is massive. Bear and Burr, if say Mumbo's motors here to help heroes build great vehicles and beat ugly Chrome Gratilda. All right. You can sort of get a gist of the area here. Oh, or game say Baron Bird need to rebuild Smash Vehicle. Master Mechanic Mumble, explain how. Oh, I didn't even see that. Hmm, Mumble recall that log vehicle will look like shopping trolley, so Bear need tray to start. Tray carry good, stuff good. Bear choose tray from storage category now, alright. This is just gonna be sort of your tutorial for how you build vehicles in this game. Mumble approve, Bear put the tray, show use, use left stick to move your tray. We will do that. You can book them. Train right place. Bear see outline. Go green. Press A button to place tray. Bear listen good. I'm rotating the camera with the right stick. I think that's pretty obvious for what you can do. Press B button to return to parts list and choose wheels. We will do that. We got four of these things. We will place them all in the right spots. <laughs> Mumble press. Not think Super Bear will get so far. Vehicle now needs seat. Bear actually expect to drive. Press B to return in there. Select the seat. All right. We'll place the seat there. Uh, we need an engine. As you can see, there's different classes of different types of power. So, as well as obviously, there will be different types of engines. So that's one thing we can do. 
And fuel. We can add this right there. Bear did a great job, vehicle complete. And I'm gonna take back now. Trolley saving vehicle database so Bear can use it. All right. There's a lot more to Mumbo's Motors than will than just that tutorial. We'll be getting into that more in quite a bit later on, but. Yeah, it's gonna be... It's gonna be something. You can welcome trolley vehicle upside down, not panic. Bear stay next to things and use left trigger to flip over. Now try this stay next to trolley pr Ush, left trigger to turn vehicle right the way around. We will do that. Bear get used to trolley log. Not let Bear take any other vehicle into showdown town. Press Y to get in out of vehicles. If Bear loses vehicle or too far away, press and hold Y button to quickly recall vehicle. Very useful. So yeah, bear not ready to drive. Probably crash lots and bear very clumsy, but not worry. Use right trigger to accelerate, left trigger brake. Go see what the trolley can do. All right, download my lost challenge. Oh, um, okay. This cutscene here is a bit different. This is actually a DLC cutscene. If you have played through. You can buy the DLC for this game for about $5. I will not be even doing this right now because it's brutal. It's really, really brutal. You will not be ready to attempt that yet, especially if this is your first time. I, I would not advise buying the DLC before popping this game in for the first time. But yeah, there's a lot in this game that... I still want to talk about collecting musical notes seem to be an old trifle, but they're only form of currency in Showdown Town. And <laughs> that's quite enough messing around. Drive your trolley around the bottom of my hill and climb the winding path of the factory so I can get this game started properly. We can do that, but there's still a lot of things I would like to do beforehand. Yeah, as you see here, we're still... Yeah, there's still a lot of stuff that we have to do here. Anyways, we have a nice giant target on our thing. And unfortunately, running map, you'll see a speedometer include There's just so many tutorials early on. I didn't I knew there was this game had a lot of tutorials early on, but I didn't remember it being this much. Unfortunately, we can't exactly go up there. If we had our talent rot, we would probably be able to, but yeah. And I guess we will talk to this character here because this is actually a recurring character. Good to see you, Banjo. Humble Wumba set shop across the square from use to Shaman Mumbo. Humble sell vehicle parts and complete vehicle blueprints. Sorry, Brando, shop not open for business yet. Okay, so we can't exactly do that yet. I'm just gonna be wandering around the town to show off some things here really quickly. I want to get a lot of the main collectibles in this area here. This is another th mechanic I need to go over here. Pretty simple one, though. See, so I discovered a warp. Not much use at the moment, but in another little bit, you'll be able to travel instantly between them like a shortcut. So yeah, we got warp pads, some akin to Banjo Tui. Silver notes are worth five notes, and the regular ones are worth that. You can also, if you attack a regular note, I didn't really get to show that off too well, but if you, you can pick up regular notes as well using the right trigger like you would anything else, and you can actually drop the notes on the ground like such, and that can actually be a pretty useful tip if there's notes that are slightly out of reach for you. And yeah, next up, I want to go over this way, and I want to talk to this guy. Oh, I'm almost remember I used to be dead, but fortunately I got over that. This is the town tourist information booth where you can find all kinds of help. Uh, <laughs> so far, I learned other useless rubbish. Let's see. <laughs> Are you of any use? Where's Mrs. Bottles? Did you enjoy being dead? Who's this log guy? Yeah, you can just basically get some... What do you know about... What do you know about Killer Instinct 3? I'm sorry, this game has a great sense of humor. Even if you don't like the changing gameplay style, you can't deny this game has a funny sense of humor. Let's just see this. 
I've heard it's gonna start our mighty balls. I'm knitting myself a bandana just in case that turns out to be true. Yeah, you can talk to bottles just to sort of get your hints. I'll be going over more of that later. This, as you see the number of the crate in there, you will not be able to get that for a really long time. Speaking of crates though, speaking of crates though, there's quite a few crates you can actually access early on in Showdown Town. We've passed by a couple of them already, but yeah. And I want to go over something kind of interesting with the Mumbo Crates, is that if we pick up more than one, like such, there's two right over here, I believe we're going to be we're able to get five right off the bat. Not, well, I guess four, because there's the tutorial one. There's... There's another one behind a gate there. Again, we can't really do a whole lot about that. We can get this one here. And... I believe we did actually see the other one. Yep. A lot of that's going to be happening because for some reason this game has to have some of the weirdest physics engines you'll ever see. But that's alright, that's alright. Basically wanted to show that there was yet another crate back here. And... Let's see what happens when we take all these crates on. I'll be having the information bios on the side sort of explaining what all these crates contain anyway. So, and just a brief little description of where they are. Just kind of a nice little thing. I kind of miss in the old days of Let's Playing when Elfers used to do things like that. And let's trade in all of these crates at once. Very useful feature. Find Mumble crates around, play some pink zone, talk to Mumble, get new vehicle parts, bear can enter your garage, and build clever vehicles. Ah, Bear bring another crate. What's this one? Mumble open new parts in the garage so Bear can put parts in the garage. Yeah, whatever. We got an achievement. <laughs> Let's see what this one says. Found a return two Mumble crates to Mumble's motors. All right. We got the egg gun. This is a... Let's see Mumble's description of it if he even says it. Um, Just kind of... A generic egg shooter weapon. It's kind of akin to the classic egg guns, that, or classic egg guns, classic eggs from the original games. Fulgore's fist. I believe this is an ammoless weapon. I don't remember. I don't think this uses ammo, which would be very nice if it didn't. We got more standard reels. We already went over these, and that's pretty much it. So, yeah. And that's not bad. I believe that's pretty much it for now. So let's just finally go and do what Log was asking us to do before. This place, the hub, the overworld in Showdown Town. I won't get to fully explain my thoughts on it right now, but it is big. It is very big. I don't think you'll be able to fully appreciate the size of the scale of this place quite yet, but. This place is very, very big. There's a lot you will be able to see and do in this place in due time. So, yeah, we'll keep this place in mind up for a lot later on, but... Yeah, we'll be exploring this place a lot. If, if the bios weren't any indication, considering you can probably tell... Oh, crap. No! This was a stupid mistake. It does give me a chance to show off one feature otherwise, even if I'm going to need to go back up to the place. The camera can zoom out here. Uh, this actually wasn't what I was anticipating on showing off here, but... Actually, wait, can I actually do this here? I wasn't sure this was even a possibility, but... Okay! So, I didn't realize that was actually possible, but I figured that's something worth at least noting as well. Nuts and bolts! is an extremely easy game to sequence break. There's 
you will undeniably, undeniably find glitches in this game that... Yeah, you will undeniably find glitches in this game that will... It's... You can do a lot of weird, weird stuff in this game. Anyways, we've dilly-dallied a lot. Let's talk to Log here. Oh well, now listen. These are game globes. They become available when you bank enough jiggies. But as you don't have any jiggies yet, I'll grant you the game's first globe for free. Placing the game globe on its plinth will unlock one of the ga fabulous game worlds of my creation. Be careful not to lose the game globe, otherwise you'll have to come back up here and get another one by using this wretched hole. Now put the game globe in your vehicle, take it to the plinth, and I'll tell you how to win your first jiggy. Alright. We can do that. And... We can actually head down for real this time with some of the weirdest traction you'll ever see. And let's talk to Gruntilda, because we totally should. <laughs> I love that she's wearing those old lady sunglasses. This town is such a confusing place. I'd slap the planner across the face. <laughs> oh, I... <laughs> Feathered friend is such a joke. Where are the funny lines? She once spoke. <laughs> yeah, you can just sort of talk to Grunty. She'll say some quick little one-liners and... Yeah. Anyway, let's place the... I said, let's place the globe on top of here, I figured just driving over it wouldn't be enough, because it usually is in this game's case, but, oh well. Open nuts! The jo Jolly's Roger Lodger Hotel, that's kind of a nice homage, I guess. And yeah! We now have opened up a lot of these doors with numbers. Wonderful, the first world in the game is now activated. Each world has several acts where jiggies can be won, and each door leads to a different act. Unless each door requires a set number of jiggies open. I'd like to think of it as classic banjo homage. Jiggy total is required shown above the door, so you'll need that number of jiggies in the jiggy bank in order to open it. I see the door in the first... Bleh, the act one door in this game world is open, so take a look inside. Is this where your first jiggy is located? Yeah! We'll be going over that in the next part, because, yeah, this game is massive. Like, for reference, you can see just over there, that's one of the parts of the first world, and it requires 47 jiggies to open. We won't be able to get there for a long, long time. So, yeah, with all that being said, thank you guys for watching this video. I've been Master Summerin. And join me back next time for more Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. I'll see you guys for that then. Peace out.